Well, the virus has now killed more than 100 people in China, and new cases have been confirmed around the world. So you don't want to frighten the American public. France and South Korea have also got evacuation plans. Which you need to prepare for and assume. Strongly warning Americans to avoid all non-essential travel to China. That this is going to be a real serious problem. France, Australia, Canada, the US, Singapore, Cambodia, Vietnam, the list goes on. Health officials are investigating more than 100 possible cases in the US. Germany, a man has uh, contracted the virus. The epidemic is a demon and we cannot let this demon hide. Japan, where a bus driver uh, contracted the virus. Coronavirus has killed more than 100 people there and infected more than 4,500. We have to prepare for the worst, always, because if you don't and the worst happens. War Room Pandemic. Here's your host, Stephen K. Bannon. I want to go now to, uh, to uh, our guest, Governor Eric Greitens. Eric, uh, by the way, I love the new show on Real America's Voice. Thank you very much for joining Brother. us. What's yeah, your you perspective? Bet, you, you, dude, you're a, Na- you're a Navy SEAL. You, you've fought for your country. You're a patriot. You've been a governor. You have fought through the firestorm like nobody else. Tell me what is this? Because Brian Kennedy came on and called it a coup. Some other, you're a level-headed guy. Kennedy's a level-headed guy. Tell me what is going on here. Dude, the fight's on. The fight, the fight is on, Steve, and it is a big fight. And I'm proud of the fact that, I mean, you know this, like Real America's Voice, Just the News, have now launched an effort to investigate all of these election irregularities. And that shouldn't, that shouldn't scare anybody. Like, we should be digging in and figuring out why we're having all of these anomalous results. I mean, you don't have to have a degree in statistics to look at what's happening in some of these precincts, at least what appears to be happening. You look at the voter turnout, you look at the way that these ballots have come in. Let's get to the bottom of this and figure out what's going on. And I think people need to like strap on and get ready. Like we have to go and we're gonna have to fight for and make sure that we get the truth in every precinct in America. And it needs to happen in Wisconsin. It needs to happen in Michigan. It needs to happen in Pennsylvania. It needs to happen in Arizona and Nevada and we have to be willing to go and I want to say like I agree a hundred percent with with Maggie like we need to have everyone who's claiming to be a Republican everybody who's there in the good times it's time to come out and fight but I will tell you from from personal experience like there's a tremendous amount of cowardice in the establishment of the Republican Party Um, and you've seen it you've seen it throughout history and, but we've got to have everybody who's willing to fight should say, hey, this is something that every American can get behind, getting to the bottom of what's happening in our election. You know, Eric, when I first met you, one of the things that most impressed me was that your, your great love of the Constitution, you had taken an oath to defend yeah, it as a naval officer. You, 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 you understand that you've been governor of a major state. Walk people through this, this, this aspect of when this, you know, what a secretary of state and, and being able to certify a vote, and you can only certify a vote when you have the real votes, not, not, not fraudulent votes, not, uh, not unverifiable votes, but, but real votes. If you can't certify it, how does the state legislature get involved? And, and this whole, because we're hurtling towards a constitutional crisis sometime around yeah. early December of this year. Walk our audience through that. All right, well, let's, let's first of all, let's step back really big picture because a lot of the mainstream media and other people will try and make this really confusing and they'll try and make it sound convoluted. It's actually really simple. The Constitution says that every American gets equal protection under the law. This was part of the basis of the Constitution and the founding. The whole idea was that no matter where you were born, no matter what background you had, no matter where you you lived or you came from, every American citizen got equal protection under the law. It's a fundamental principle. Now, how does that apply to voting? Well, what that means is that everyone's vote has to be equally protected under the law. Now let's go back to Bush versus Gore for a minute. Now a lot of people remember the 5-4 decision. In fact, there was also in Bush versus Gore, there was a 7-2 Supreme Court decision where they said what Al Gore was trying to do, Al Gore wanted to have a recount of votes in just three Democratic counties in Florida. And the Supreme Court said, no, you can't do that. 7-2 vote, they said no. 
everybody in the state equal protection under the law. That's principle number one. Principle two is that the Constitution is exceptionally clear that the state legislature and only the state legislature sets the manner, the time, and the place of elections. What does that mean? That means that activist judges can't come in and change the rules. That means that an election board can't come in and change the rules. So when we talk about legitimate votes being counted, that means that they're legitimate in the eyes of the Constitution. And what the Constitution says is that only the rules that the state legislature sets are the valid rules. So the rules that are set by the elected representatives of the people. So again, those are those two really simple principles, equal protection under the law, and number two, that it's only the state legislature that sets the manner, the time, and the place for elections. So where does that, where does that leave us now? It leaves us in a place where what's ultimately going to happen, this is my belief, is that the Supreme Court is going to have to step in. In some of these states, the Supreme Court is going to have to say, look, under the Constitution, you have to have equal protection under the law, and I do believe that they'll stand up for that principle. And they should also stand up for the principle that the rules that are set by the state legislature are the ones that we follow, not some judge deciding that you get an extra three days to vote or not some election board putting in, uh, putting in new rules. So that, those are the key constitutional issues that are going to be, be at stake here. Do you believe that we'll blow through the safe harbor and that we won't because of state legislatures having to perform their duty and the and state uh, secretaries of state not being able to certify this, that will actually go to what is called a contingent election in the House in January? Look, I, I hope not, Steve. Uh, I, I hope not. I think, that, I think that the American people want to choose their president. Um, you know, the first time that happened, a lot of folks will remember, was in 1800 when the election actually went to, uh, went to the House. That was when uh, Thomas Jefferson was running against Aaron Burr. They had a tied number of electoral votes. Alexander Hamilton actually stepped in. He didn't like Jefferson or Burr. Alexander Hamilton actually stepped in on behalf of, of Jefferson, helped push Jefferson over the line in the House of Representatives. And what ended up happening there, people may remember, is that Hamilton and Burr ended up squaring off in a duel and Burr's, Burr's bullet actually ended up ending uh, Hamilton's life. Um, look, the, the fact is the American people want their votes to decide the presidential election. I certainly hope that we don't end up there. And I think that it's in the best interest of everyone, and especially uh, the president, that we actually get state legislatures to come in and, and certify and do, do what they need to do. But it's going to require the Supreme Court um, to act swiftly. Eric, can you give us uh, details? What's your Twitter handle? The show's fantastic. Talk to us about the show. Give us your Twitter handle. We've got about a minute left. Yeah, thanks, brother. Uh, we'd, we'd invite everybody to come out. You know, follow, follow me at Eric Greitens on Facebook. It's real simple. Just put in Eric Greitens, G R E I T E N S, in the show. Actionable Intelligence, you can watch it right here on Real America's Voice, 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 Central, every day. Uh, we've got a great lineup. We've had some fantastic guests on. Rudy Giuliani, Victoria Tenzing have come on to really walk us through uh, what's happening. We've had some fun guests on, like Frank Mir, UFC undefeated, you know, or two-time uh, heavyweight, heavyweight champion. We've got a lot of really good, good guests on, and we're speaking straight to the American people. It's a show that respects the intelligence of the American people, respects the, the service of our heroes uh, on the front lines, and I, I'm really proud of what we're doing. Governor, thank you very much. Governor Eric Greitens, one of the great you, Americans, you bet, a true patriot. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Eric Greitens. That's what I love about this movement. We got the smartest guys on the side of the football. You got, uh, you got an hour, you got Brian Kennedy, you get Eric Greitens, you get, uh, you're going to have Bill McGinley, right? And look at that crowd of deplorables out in Maricopa County. There's not an ounce of back down in this movement, right? Not an ounce of back down. So we're going to have the back of Donald J. Trump. We're, we're closing on victory, right? We're not going to give this thing up. Okay, short commercial break. We're going to have Phil Klein next on World.